There is a uh, special Radha Krishna Juvan Yatra. <clears throat> so this is, you could say, one of the most popular events that take place in the holy land of Vrindavan, where Lord Krishna appeared five thousand years ago and performed his amazing pastimes where he attracted everyone with his all attractive most beautiful form his all attractive most beautiful flute playing his all attractive most beautiful um, pastimes and his all attractive most sweetness of love with his pure devotees so this uh, in Vindavan, amongst the local people, this festival generally it's lasts for 13 days. And hundreds and thousands of people from all the surrounding towns and villages around Vindavan, they all come into Vindavan at this, this very auspicious time of Jula Yatra. And during this time, you will see around Vrindavan many varieties of swings. You know, it is said there's something like 5,000 temples in Vrindavan. And in most of these temples you'll find this swing festival taking place. And there's many varieties of swings, some very opulent swings. You know, swings made from pure gold. <laughs> and sometimes in silver, and sometimes even just very simple swings made with love and devotion, decorated with beautiful local forest flowers, all made for the pleasure and service of Shishi, Radha and Krishna. Not only in Vrindavan, but in also other parts of India, such as Jagannath Puri, Mathura, also all around the world now, by the mercy of Shri Prabhupada and all our Viscon temples around India and around all, every country of the world, this swing festival is being celebrated at this time. And of course, traditionally, in our Viscon temples, a small set of Radha Krishna duties, they're taken from the altar, they're placed on the elaborately decorated swing in the temple room. Then the devotees and members of the congregation are invited. They're all invited to come forward and push the deities on the swing. And, uh, and it's a kind of a tradition that some the devotees, they get some flower petals and they offer them to the deities before they swing. And then they offer some prayers, some nice prayers to Radha Krishna. And then they swing the deities. They gently push the swing you know, several times while the devotees are chanting special prayers and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and so many other traditional prayers and songs just like we did this morning. Very nice. Glorifying. These prayers are glorifying the divine couple Radha and Krishna. So in this, in our Wisconsin temples, we observe this festival for five days in accordance with Srila Prabhupada's instructions. But whether you observe it for five days or seven days or 13 days like in Vindavan, the same festival is simply put on for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord and his loving associates. Now this is a very wonderful ceremonial function of Krishna's pastimes that reflects practically, it reflects, reflects practically how we are meant to render devotional service because in essence that's what we are we're eternal loving servants of Krishna and we're meant to serve him with love and devotion so because at this time of this festival in India it's the monsoon period and everyone's lived in India they know what the monsoon period means it means the air is thick and it's heavy with, and humid with heat and rains and the fields and the jungles are all lush and green and flowers are blooming everywhere it's a very beautiful time 
However, however, everyone's feeling the humidity. Everyone's suffering from the humidity. So the real opulence at this time is to find a nice breeze. You know, to get a nice breeze to get relief from the humidity. So the devotees arrange for the pleasure and satisfaction of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna a nice breeze by placing them on the swing, a dulan, and swing them back and forward. And this creates a very natural breeze from the motion for the pleasure of the divine couple. Sometimes the devotees, they use a, a fine spray of rose water and they direct it to the divine couple as they're swinging them on the swing. <laughs> Refreshing. So the atmosphere of this festival is especially sweet as everyone gets a chance to intimately serve the divine couple Radha and Krishna by lovingly swinging them on their transcendental swing. So this festival, like many others, is not just a mere ritual. Rather, we should understand that Krishna himself has actually arranged these special festivals, these special festival, festive occasions, just to invoke the loving attitude of his devotees. You know, Krishna, we know, he's the supreme enjoyer. And everything he does is pleasurable. Everything he does is for his enjoyment. You know, in Galoka Vindavan, the spiritual world, you know, Krishna enjoys this loving reciprocation with his pure devotees during his pastimes, both in, during the day and at night. Also, throughout various seasons, he also enjoys involving us in his loving devotional service, which is our natural condition in the spiritual realm. You know, we know that beyond this body beyond this world, world, we have an eternal spiritual identity, a svarup. We have an eternal uh, spiritual form in the spiritual world where we, can, we serve Krishna directly out of love and devotion. So we know, although Krishna is, he's completely satisfied. It's sometimes and they call Krishna, he's not, one of his names is Atmaram. You know, Krishna, he's, he doesn't need anything or anyone to satisfy him. He's completely satisfied. But we also hear that he eternally has the taste, the ecstatic bliss derived from the love and devotion of his devotees. It's through us, through our devotion, that Krishna gives pleasure to himself. Also, he is, and, and, and although he doesn't need anything, the more we serve him out of love and devotion, the more he sincerely appreciates our service. And the result is, we get incredible spiritual realizations, we get spiritual advancement, we experience that inner happiness and peace and complete satisfaction within our hearts. So he is the supreme controller of everything and everyone. But it, we understand from the Vedic literatures that he's conquered by the love of his pure devotees, by his sincere loving devotees. He allows himself to come under the control of his devotees' pure love. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that he declares that the pure devotees are always in my heart and I am always in theirs. They do not know anyone else but me and I do not know anyone else but them. So when Krishna organizes these wonderful festivals so we can, even though we're down here, we're not in the spiritual world, although this is where Krishna is being worshipped, is considered a holy place. You know, even in this world, in these material bodies, we can enjoy being part of his transcendental pastimes by swinging him on the swing. And very nice. So, you know, to 
traditionally, at this time of the year, you know, Radharani and the other young brides are taken to their mother-in-law, taken from their mother-in-law's house to their father's house by their brothers. So, we know Radharani's brother is Sridhar. So he would take Radharani to her parents' home in Bashan and she would have a very nice time there with her girlfriends and with Krishna. And at this time, she would enjoy this Dhyulan Yatra, this swing festival, both during periods of the day and also the night. You know, as I said, that ultimately, you know, she was not just satisfied swinging alone on the swing, or even with her girlfriends. But she wanted Krishna there, you know, because she is the topmost lover and worshipper of Krishna. He's the most dear to Krishna, and Krishna is the most dear to her. So knowing this, you know, Krishna would sometimes come to her palace. But he would come disguised, in different disguises, sometimes as a gopi selling bangles or beautiful garlands. Or sometimes he would arrange to meet her and her gopi friends in very secret places in the forest where Brinda Devi would arrange these beautiful swings for the divine couple. And it actually it is said that the swings would make were generally made hanging from kadamba trees. And we have a kadamba tree out there. And you probably notice when the kadamba tree comes into bloom it has these beautiful big yellow flowers. So it is said that because the kadamba tree carries the complexion of Sri Mati Radharani, you know, she has the complexion of molten gold. And has that beautiful sweet smelling flowers, you know, those yellow flowers. And also it is said that the Kadamba tree, it's very strong. You know, that tree, it's very strong, implanted there in the ground. So this also, and it's also very beautiful. And this is, this actually is said that this signifies the superiority of Srimati Radharani because she can control Krishna with her love. That's the name, another name of, of Radharani is Hari. He, she who completely inundates Krishna with her love. So throughout Vrindavan during this time there was many, many wonderful swings. The Radha and Krishna and the gopis would enjoy these wonderful loving pastimes together, swinging on these beautiful swings, you know, actually they said that on four sides of Radha Kund, you know, Radha Kund is Radha Rani's own special lake. So on the four sides of Radha Kund, there's these jeweled stairways leading down to jeweled bathing gats. And on either side of these bathing gats are pairs of wonderfully decorated swings. And these swings are hanging from flower-laden trees of mango trees, kadamba trees, bakula trees, champak trees, and lining all sides of Radha Kund with these couple vrikshi trees, the wish-fulfilling desire trees that are all bowing down to the divine couple. <laughs> and they're bowing down from the weight of their deliciously sweet fruits and intoxicating fragrant flowers. And just outside of Radha Kund, there are gardens of six seasonal forests, there's six forests, and each forest has a different season. You can go into one forest and you have spring, you go to another forest, you've got autumn and summer. So these six seasonal forests is where Radha and Krishna can enjoy 
they can enjoy the season of their choice on the day. And here we find swings and gates and canopies and platforms and courtyards and pathways, all artistically decorated with beautiful flowers. I see in Lalita Kund. Uh, Lalita is one of Radharani's best friends, so she also has a, a lake named after her, Lalita Kund. A lake, sorry, a forest. <laughs> a, a Lalita Kund. And there's this beautiful, amazing swing, and it's designed in such a way that eight principal gopis can sit on one side of the swing and they can face Radha and Krishna while they swing together. And during, during these swings, while they're swinging, all the gopis, they sing these beautiful songs glorifying the divine couple Radha and Krishna while they're swinging. Okay, one pastime, you know, one day while well, strolling through the forest, you know, Radha, Krishna and the gopis, they came upon this, upon this really beautiful swing in the forest. So this swing was especially designed in such a way that two persons could occupy the seats facing each other. If you can picture that, <laughs> this swing. So when Krishna saw that beautiful swing, what did he do? He immediately jumped onto the swing. Then he tried to persuade Radharani to join her. He's telling him, no, Radha, come on, we will swing together. However, Radharani refused. She refused to go on that swing because she knew that Krishna, he's a very tricky boy. <laughs> he knew that he would swing too high and frighten her. You know, actually, you know, in Braj, during this festival, before they start the swing festival, they sing this special song in the traditional language of Braj. Well, well, the swing festival is about to begin, and this song describes how Sri Krishna has come. He's waiting at the swing for his beloved to come. However, Sri Radharani is in man, a sulky mood. Therefore, the gopi friends try to persuade her, saying, Give up your sulky mood, Radha. Come at once, your beloved Krishna is waiting for you. So they think this beautiful song, <laughs> depicting this pastime. So Radharani, she refused to hop on that swing. She told Krishna, that you can hop on the swing and you, after you swing then me and one of my gopi friends will swing on the swing. We'll enjoy swinging. But Krishna again and again, he requested, Radha, no, please come and join me on the swing. I promise I won't swing too high. I promise. Radha Rani, she didn't believe, she, she didn't believe him. <laughs> but soon Radha's got friends, her girlfriends. They started requesting her, saying, if you just sit on the swing with Krishna, we will push the swing very gently so that he cannot go too high. We'll restrict the swing's movements. So Radharani finally agreed to swing. She, she sat on the swing and she's facing Krishna. But there's a two seats. And Krishna's on one side, Radharani's on the other. And they're facing each other on the swing. And, uh, but when she hopped on the swing, she very timidly hopped on the swing because she knew that somehow or other, this very tricky boy, Krishna, would manage to swing too high and frighten her. So at this time, you know, the gopis, they started pushing the swing very gently and Radharani was just relaxing, enjoying the atmosphere of Radha Kund. They're singing beautiful songs while they're swinging. But after a while, that very tricky boy, Krishna, he started moving his legs on the swing, causing the swing to go higher. 
And before anyone had realised it, the swing was going higher and higher and higher. It was above the gopis' heads. And Radharani, when she started realising what was happening, she demanded Krishna, stop, stop the swing and let me off. Well, what did Krishna do? He's, you know, he's a, he started laughing. <laughs> he caused the swing to go higher and higher and higher. You know, they said that, you know, Krishna, he's only like a, a young boy. He's only like six, seven, eight years old. You know, and young, it is known, the psychology is young boys, they like to tease young girls, you know that? Mm. <laughs> and young girls, they like to be teased, you know, they like to get some attention. <laughs> but you know, the, the swing was going higher and higher and higher, and the gopis were calling out, Krishna, stop! Stop this swing! Let Radharani off. She's getting so... And, and you know, Krishna just pretended he didn't hear them. <laughs> And the swing went so high, it was going high, it was went higher than the trees. And Radharani's shawl, just shawl, just flew off. And she was so frightened. She just, immediately, she just screamed out loudly. And then she jumped into Krishna's arms and held on to him very tightly, like this. As she had said that the union of Radha and Krishna embracing on the swing resembled a, a brilliant lightning flash in the middle of a dark rain cloud. <laughs> you know, Krishna, he became so ecstatic getting the Radharani's embrace. Actually, he became overwhelmed. He became overwhelmed with happiness. And he caused the swing to go higher and higher. And it went so high that eventually it went right around 360 degrees. Can you imagine that? The very first. Wow. You know, when Radharani's girlfriend saw this, oh, very surprised. The swing went right over 360 degrees. Yes. But they all started singing the glories of Radha and Krishna in great ecstasy. So soon after, you know, Krishna, having accomplished his objective of getting Radha, Radhika's embrace, he, he eventually slowed the swing down gradually and he brought it to the stop. <laughs> and then Radha Rani, she began, seat, she hopped off the swing and then she began seating each of her gopi friends on the swing to swing with Krishna and she would push the swing and sing beautiful songs, glorifying Krishna and the transcendental pastimes. You know, so yes, so sometimes Krishna, you know, he, in many, there's many pastimes where he, where he uh, performed these pastimes of, of teasing Radharani. There's another pastime, you know, where Radharani was picking flowers then she saw these, she's picking flowers to make beautiful garlands for Krishna. Then she saw there was one flower, it was right up on the tree, but she, and she tried to jump up and get that flower, but she could, just couldn't quite catch it. It was just out of her reach. So Krishna, he was, he was standing uh, quite a distance away, but he was watching her. And he could see that she wanted that flower. So while she was turning around picking other flowers, Krishna, he raced up there and he climbed the tree and he's put his foot on the branch. So the flower went lower. And then Radharani, she came back and she saw the flower was, it was lower. And she was saying, that's, this is very interesting. Now, the, you know, and, and she was, so she, she put her hand on the branch to, to pull the branch down to get the flower and then Krishna put his foot up and Radharani was hanging onto the branch she went flying up onto the tree and she's hanging there in the tree you know calling out help 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 
And then that great hero, Krishna, mysteriously appeared on the scene and saved her, <laughs> brought her down from that tree and gave her a hug. Yes, yeah, said so Krishna. So, you know, sometimes, you know, being the greatest devotee and worshipper of Krishna, you know, Sri Radha, she possesses the most exemplary and exalted mentality. You know, she would tell her friends that, I do not mind my personal distress. I only wish for the happiness of Krishna. For his happiness is the goal of my life. However, if he feels great happiness in giving me distress, that distress is the best of my happiness. <laughs> yes. So, um, it is said that, you know, while strolling through the forest, he came to one place where there was many, many swings hanging from different trees. And uh, Krishna, using his mystic power, he expanded himself into se several Krishnas to swing on a large number of swings with all the different gopis on each side of him. And sometimes Krishna is called Yogeshvara. He's the master of all mysticism. <laughs> so after this, this pastime of, you know, swinging high on the swing, Arinda Devi escorted the divine couple to this very elegantly designed swing, which is the shape of this big, huge lotus flower. So Radha and Krishna would sit in the middle and the eight main gopis would sit on seats on the eight petals around Radha and Krishna. And then surrounding Ra uh, those eight main gopis were another 16 assistant gopis sitting on the 16 petals that surrounded those eight petals. Because huge, sweet, the shape of a lotus flower. So they would sit on the swing and while they were sitting there, Rinda Devi would come and she would provide nice cool drinks and beautiful forest fruits to the divine couple. And after they had eaten, the gopis would receive their remnants. And then Rinda and Nandi Mukhi would smoothly push that loose swing back and forth. Very nice. So it is said, you know, this transcendental land of Goloka Vrindavan is just always bubbling over. It's just bubbling over with this deliciously tasty variety of astounding, delightful, transcendental activities. And he has said that only in that divine realm, where the divine couple, Radha and Krishna, performing their transcendental pastime is there is never a dull moment. It is like a continuous festival of joy is going on eternally. So, yes, so every day around 11 a.m., you know, after Krishna was frolicking in the forest with his cowherd friends, you know, herding the cows and performing all the pastimes of you know, wrestling and eating forest fruits and doing all types of pastimes. He had stepped away to meet his beloved Srimati Radharani and, 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 and together they would enjoy these nectarine pastimes together at Radha Kund and the surrounding forests. You know, there would be little swings and picking flowers together, eating forest fruits together. They would engage in, you know, colour squirting wars sometimes. At Bradford, water splashing contests. There was also flute stealing pastimes. Decorating one another with flowers, you know, drinking honey nectars, eating forest fruits. They would also 
play board games together or resting on beautiful flower petal beds. So Vrindavan is Krishna's transcendental eternal abode where he enjoys himself with his eternal associates and paraphernalia. And he mercifully appears on earth to manifest these eternal pastimes. He comes down with all his eternal associates and he creates this whole ent- replica of the spiritual world right here on planet earth in Vrindavan. He comes and performs these amazing past, beautiful pastimes just to attract us. You know, we're attracted to this so many things in this world. But he comes to attract us. He teaches us how we can enjoy with him on the spiritual platform, in the spiritual world. He comes to attract us to our eternal home, which is Vrindavan. So this is the highest spiritual realization, you know, to be attached to the personal form of the Supreme Lord. And the more we hear about him, the more we read about him, the more we chant his holy name and serve him with love and devotion, the more we become attached to him. The more we can enter into a very personal relationship and experience his eternal friendship and realize that he is our supreme beloved. He is our supreme beloved and I am his tiny servant. So this is a wonderful transcendental Jula Nyatra festival of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna's pastimes which <clears throat> reflects, reflects practically how we can render service to them for the, their transcendental pleasure. So we too can take part in their transcendental Vrindavan pastimes. And as I said, these, fest- these, pa- these festivals have been created by Krishna himself to invoke our loving sentiments. And it is said that this swing festival very, very dear to Radha and Krishna. Shri Shri Radha Vinda Jira Nyakcha Ki Shri La Prabhupada Ki Shri Shri Radha Vinda Jira Nyakcha Ki Shri Shri Ki Anyone have to add anything? Ask me. Okay. Shri Prabhupada Ki 